Hello children, welcome to English English with Kashish. Yes, I hope all of you are taking care of yourself in this kind of situation where we are in. Please take care of yourself and your family. Stay indoors for a little more time and then all of us will be happy back to school. So today I have a very nice chapter. It's called CLM and it's the lesson 10 of your English language. It's written by John Massfield. Who is CLM? CLM is the mother of the poet. Yes, CLM, the full form is Caroline L. Massfield because his name is John Massfield. His mom's name is Caroline M. L. Massfield and she is poet's mother. Now in this poem, the poet tells us about mothers. Yes, the most important part of our life, our mothers. Will we be here on earth if our mums were not there? No, right? She takes care of us from the time we are an egg in her womb. Yes, from that time she takes care of her. She bears all the pains and sufferings and gets at, uh, gets, gives us a new life. Absolutely. So are you also taking care of your mothers? Please always remember she is the most important part of our life. And let's see what the poet has to tell us about his mother now. Okay, so let's read about the poet a little bit first. His name was John Edward Massfield, the full name. Okay, and he was an English poet and also a writer and poet laureate of the United Kingdom from 1930 until his death in 1967. He is remembered as the author of the classic children's novels The Midnight Fox. I hope you've read that. If not, then you should. And the box of delights and poems including The Everlasting Mercy and Sea Fever. Remember these poems for your exam point of view. Massfield was born in Ledbury in Herefordshire to Caroline and George Massfield, who was his mom? Caroline. Who was his father? George, a solicitor. His mother died when he was only a small little baby. He was six year old when his mother died. And that's why he knows the importance of mother because he could never get the love of his mom. Okay? Soon his father died with mental breakdown and thus he started living with his aunt whose aunt mother's sister now there is a pre-reading activity given in your book so let's see that first can you think of a one line dedication to your mother a one line about your mum what do you like the most about your mother okay or maybe what you don't like most about her let's do that now I'm going to read the poem first for you and then line by line explanation. In the dark womb where I began, my mother's life made me a man. Through all the months of human birth, her beauty fed my common earth. I cannot see, nor breathe, nor stir, but through the death of some of her. Down in the darkness of the grave, she cannot see the life she gave. For all her love, she cannot tell whether I use it ill or well, nor knock at dusty doors to find her beauty dusty in the mind. If the grave's gates could be undone, she would not know her little son. I am so grown, if we should meet, she would pass by me in the street. Unless my soul's face let her see my sense of what she did for me. What have I done to keep in mind my debt to her and womankind? What woman's happier life repays her for those months of wretched days? For all my mouthless body leached, ere births releasing hell was reached. What have I done or tried or said? In thanks to that dear woman dead, men triumph over women still. Men trample women's right at will. And man's lust roves the world untamed. O oh, grave, keep shut, lest I be shamed. Okay, 
So I will start the poem now, line by line explanation. This is all about the poet, how he feels about his mother and also what he wants to give to the world, to all the mothers around the world about their rights, about how they are treated. So let's see. In the dark womb where I began, it is so dark, right? A mother's womb where a baby is inside. It's very dark. That is where any human boy or a girl begins his life. My mother's life made me a man. So basically what happened was when he was only six year old, she gave birth to his sister who as soon as she was born, his mother died. So basically a mother gives a part of her life to a child born. Isn't it the way she takes care? She gives her all the time, effort, her beauty, her everything to the baby, right? Through all the months of human birth, she gave her life to all the months of human birth. The nine months that she kept me inside her stomach, she gave her entire life to me. She couldn't walk properly, she couldn't eat properly, she couldn't sleep properly. So basically her that part of life was completely dedicated to me, to the child. Her beauty fed my common earth. What is my common earth? My common earth the poet's body, basically the bo poet's body. What, what happens when you're pregnant? You tend to look very tired. You become fat. So the entire beauty is given to the poet's body. The poet sees himself as common earth on which his mother's beauty was lavished abundantly. The entire beauty of the mother goes into taking care of the son. Okay? I cannot see nor breathe nor stir. At that point, he is not able to see, right? And he's not able to even move too much or even breathe. But through the death of some of her, slowly, 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 she is making him into a man. So, he says at the death of some of her, that means the poet's mother died while giving birth to her sixth child, a girl, Nora. Her name was Nora. The poet feels that every child she bore brought about partial death of her. So she had children. Every child that came out of her, a part of her body went with her. So by the time she gave birth to the uh, girl, baby girl, Nora, she passed away. Down in the darkness of the grave, now that she is no more there, where is she? In her grave, she's died. So there is also darkness there. So he's saying down in the darkness of the grave, she cannot see the life she gave. So basically when she's dying, she's died, she's no more there. From her grave, can she see what life she's given? Even to him because he was a small baby when she passed away and even to Nora. To both of them, she cannot see them. She cannot even see what a beautiful gift she gave to the world. Isn't it? Because she is in her grave. For all her love, she cannot tell. She can't even express her love. Whether I use it ill or well. With all the love that she gave me for some years, what am I doing with that? Am I a good person? Am I a bad person? What am I doing for my living? Where am I living? He, she doesn't know anything, whether I am happy or sad, ill or well. Nor knock at dusty doors to find. She can't even come and knock at my door to find her beauty dusty in the mind. Her beauty is very dusty in my mind because I couldn't see her for a very long time. It was a very small phrase and at that point I don't remember how she looked. So her beauty is like a little bit dust in my mind. If the grave's gate could be undone, he says, if only I wish I could open the grave's doors, the doors of the graves, undone. What is undone? It is opened. If only I could open the graves. Why do you think he wants to open the graves? He wants his mom to be back to him. Let's see. She would not know her little son. Why would she not know her little son? Because now her son is a grown-up man. 
he, she won't even be able to recognize him, isn't it? She won't even know how he looks like because she was not there. When we are small, it's then that our mothers give her everything. They are so passionate about their children that they give everything. Slowly, slowly, when they grow up, they don't need their mom too much. So the initial years, she didn't even know, right? So she won't know how her son looks like. I am so grown because he's so grown. If we should meet, she would pass by me in the street because when she left, he was a baby and now he's a grown-up man. Unless my soul's face let her see, unless, absolutely unless, my heart is able to see who she is. My sense of what she did for me, the sacrifices that she made for me, for everything, her body, her life, her beauty, everything she sacrificed for that little baby. What have I done to keep in mind? At this point, now, the poet has changed the direction. Earlier, he was speaking about his mother and the sacrifices she made and what he thinks, he really thinks he wants her back. But now, he changes. He says, have, what have I done for my mother? for womanhood, for motherhood. What have I done to keep in mind, to remember? What have I done to remember? My debt to her and womankind. As you know that obviously his mother gave all sacrifices to give birth to him. What has he done in return? Can we return all the love that we get from our parents? Do you think so? No, I don't think so. We can ever, ever return all the love and sacrifices they do for her. So he is thinking that it is like a debt for me. As if I have to give you something back for what you gave me. For his own mother and also for womankind. For all the women in the world. What woman's happier life repays? How do I make a woman happy? How do I repay a woman? A woman. What kind of women are there in your life? Tell me. It can be your sister, your mother, your wife, your friend. These are all the women in and around your life. So these are the people that you need to repay. Correct? You need to respect her for those months of wretched days. He says that those months that you have born for me, that are miserable days that you went through for me. How do I repay that? How do I make you happy? What do I do to repay all that? What are wretched means miserable. What kind of days is he talking about? What are the miserable, miserable days? The nine months when a woman has to suffer. And also those days when she delivers. That's the most painful part of a pregnancy which a woman has to go through. For all my mouthless baby leached. What is mouthless baby leached? So the child's body was not mouthless in the womb, but its mouth was not being used, right? It's not mouthless. The mouth actually is not being used. Are you giving food to the baby inside and he's chewing it and putting it inside? No, right? When the baby is inside the womb, uh, it's from the mama's stomach only. What I am eating from the navel goes inside the baby and that's the nourishment the baby gets. Why has he compared it through leech? You know what is leech? Leech used as a verb. It's actually used as a verb. Sucked life out of her like a leech. Consumed mother's life for its own growth. Now leech, what does it do? When it gets stuck to your body, it sucks out the blood, isn't it? So that's how a baby, what does baby do inside the womb? It sucks out the nourishment which mama eats. So, you know, we always say that if a baby is there inside your stomach, you have to eat double food because the baby needs food to grow. Correct. So the baby is compared to a leech. How leech sucks blood, baby sucks nourishment and food from mama's womb. Okay. Her birth's releasing hell was reached till I am out of the body. Till she gives birth to the baby, he keeps sucking all the nourishment and the beauty of the mother. What have I done or tried or said in return of all that that I have done? What you have done for me? What did I give you in return? Or what did I say to you in return? 
in thanks to that dear woman dead. Now that mother is dead. What have I done to make her happy is what the poet is saying here. Men triumph over women still. What do men in and out keep doing? I am not talking about all the men here, but most of the men. What do they do? They think that they are more powerful than women. They think that they have more authority than women. So, time and time again, they try to overpower and defeat women in every field. They cannot even tolerate a woman passing by, driving by. Oh, oh my God, she overtook me. I need to do that. How can a girl overtake me? Isn't it? Yes. Why is that? Men trample women's right at will. What is trample? Ignore the rights of women and treat them as if they are not important. In so many families, women are not getting importance. So the main role of the woman is what? What does she do? She cooks all the food. She puts in all the effort. She gets, I'm sorry, she gets groceries from the market. She goes into the kitchen. She cooks all the food. She serves all the delicious food the family likes on the table. And she is expected to sit alone and eat in the end. Right. Most of the families do that. Why? Why do you think woman is not important? This is what the poet's understanding is. That man trample women's right at will. They know it and that's why they do it. And man's lust roves the world untamed. What is lust roves? So, rove is roaming about. The lust of man is roaming about everywhere. And what is lust? Lust is the strong sexual desire, strong desire for supremacy over woman. Every time and everywhere, every call of the day, a man is trying to Go over the woman, boss over the woman, be more important and powerful than the woman. Isn't it? Oh grave, he says to his mother. Who is in the grave? Mother. He tells the grave, oh grave, keep shut lest I be shamed. He is feeling shameful of the men around him. And he says, it's okay mama, you are safe inside the grave. Be in because if you come out, I will be ashamed. I will really be ashamed. Yes. So this was the small short poem, a very nice message sent to the world about women and how people should be taking care of women now. The things have changed. Everything has changed. There is no inequality between man or woman. They are all on the same page, isn't it? Even women now in every field are earning much more, getting educated, are much, much, much ahead than men. So let's start doing that. Let's start respecting women in every field of life. Promise me that you will always be it any woman around you, anyone, your sister, your mother, your friend, your wife, you will respect them and give them lots and lots of love. Yes, so we go ahead with the question and answers now. Question 1 is the second line, my mother's life made me a man. It just states a natural phenomena of a mother giving birth to a son or has a hint that he was born at the cost of his mother's life. It gives us a hint that he was born at the cost of his mother's life. Question 2, the phrase her beauty in line 4 refers to what? The physical beauty of his mother is it or the beauty of his mother's physical and emotional trauma at the birth of the child. Yes, it is the beauty of his mother's physical, obviously a body changes and emotional, the, the kind of things that you go on, how will I take care of the child, what will the child eat, what will I do, will I be able, the sleepless nights, everything, trauma at the birth of the child. Question 3, these are all MCQ questions. Why does the poet use the present tense in lines 5 and 6? Why does he use the present tense? What, what tenses are there? Past, present, future. To emphasize that his very existence now is made possible by the death of some of her. To emphasize that every moment of his in his mother's womb destroyed a part of her life. Or to show that his very birth and life are responsible for his mother's partial death. The answer is B. Please keep ticking these answers with me when I am doing the video. The question answers are on the page 127. Don't forget. So yes, the answer is B. To emphasize that every moment of his in his mother's womb destroyed a little part of her life. 
question 4. What does it in the line 10 refer to? You can go back and read the line 10. It refers to the life the mother gave to the boy. Question number 5. Her beauty in line 12 refers to what? His mother's physical beauty or her son, the poet? It refers to the son, the poet. Question number 6. Dusty in the mind in line 12 refers to what? The fading memory of his mother in his mind or the state of his dead mother's mind which has forgotten the dear ones left behind. It is the fading memory of his mother in his mind. Question 7. I am so grown in line 15. What does that mean? That he has grown so much physically that she would not be able to recognize him or that he has grown so unworthy of all her sacrifices that she would not be able to recognize him or both. The answer is both. Yes. Okay. A and B. So you have to tick the answer C here. Question number 8. Which line in stanza 3 suggests that the poet is totally unworthy or ungrateful? She would not know her little son. I am so grown. This line suggests that the poet is totally unworthy and ungrateful. Question number 9. Which phrase in stanza 4 suggests that his concern goes beyond his personal experience? What have I done to keep in mind my debt to her and womankind? This statement shows that his concern goes beyond his personal experience. Question 10 for you. Providing a happier life to one's mother will repay for all her sacrifice. Is this the poet says in lines 21 and 22? The poet says that this and also something more. He means that a person should repay his mother not just by making her life better, but by making other women's lives better too. So it's not just not your family members, the woman in your family, but anyone that you come across. Make every woman in the world happy and then you see the magic. Question number 11, stanza 4 has some very powerful and forceful images. What is compared to a leech? The baby inside the womb is compared to the leech. How is it a leech? It sucks on the life of the mother. How leech sucks on blood? Baby sucks on the life from the mother. Question number 11, what is unusual about the use of the word leech? The word leached is used for a parasite-like creature which feeds on the other and destroys it. Usually babies who are entirely dependent on their mothers are referred to as leeches. But here the poet feels his mother has suffered a lot with every baby she carried. And hence he has been like a leech when he was in her womb. Okay, I hope you are understanding everything. I have used very simple language to answer the question answers. D part of question 11. Why is B in birth capitalized? Birth is a very significant moment in the life of a baby or an individual because it signifies the separation of the baby from the mother and the need for the baby to fend for itself to a certain extent. Till the baby is inside the womb, he is completely dependent on the mama. But when he comes out, little bit of independency comes, correct? It has come out of a warm, protective cave into a coy, harsh world. Question number 11 again. For whom is birth a hell? For the mother, for all her pain and suffering during the birth of her child. For the son, is it, who feels that was because of his birth that the mother died, though partially, or for both? The answer is for both. Okay, for mother and for child. Question 12. Note that lines 19 and 26 introduce a series of rhetorical questions. That is, a rhetorical question is asked for effect rather than to obtain an answer. The answer is very much implied in the question itself. What is rhetorical? When you ask a question, answer is inside the question itself. Lines 19 and 20 are a good example of rhetorical question. The meaning of the two lines is, I have done nothing worth remembering to show my debt to my mother and womankind. Identify two more examples of rhetorical questions. 
So, one more is in the line 21, 22. What woman's happier life repays her for those months of wretched days? And in the line 25, 26, I have not done or tried or said anything to express my thanks to that dear dead woman. Question 13. Man's lust in lines 29 refer to what? Does it refer to man's beastly sexuality? Man's lust for power over woman or both? It's both A and B. So the answer is C. Question 14. The poet has used many poetical devices in the last line in order to draw the reader's attention to it. What typographical deviation is used in the last line? You may read the line again, the last line. It is a single exclamatory sentence unlike the rest that are in stanzas and is written as observations and rhetorical questions. So all the other, the entire poem is in the form of a stanza. Okay, what are they doing there? Observations, observing things or rhetorical questions. But the last line ends with an exclamation, isn't it? So it's a single exclamatory sentence, only the last line. Question 14. Why do you think has he used his deviation? He has used that form as an answer to all those questions and feelings he has outlined in the stanzas. So after all the feelings, observations coming out, he felt that this is what he comes to it, the answer of it. What figure of speech is used in this line? A hyperbole, alright. It's an exaggerated statement highlighting the shame the poet is experiencing. Surely a grave will not open and his mother will not come to life and put him to shame. But this is just an exaggerated statement that he is used. So it is called hyperbole. Anything that is said in an exaggerated form is called hyperbole. Will his mother come out of the grave? Will his mother come out and be shameful about him? No. So it is an exaggerated statement. Why does the poet want the grave to keep shut? If his mother were to see him now or women were to see the mankind now, they will definitely be ashamed. How does the line end? The line ends with a graceful plea that the grave remain shut. Question 15. The most dominant feeling of the poet in the poem is a feeling of guilt or a sense of ingratitude. Gratitude, ingratitude. Remember these. Or a sense of shame. It is a sense of shame. Question 16. Look at the rhyming scheme of the first stanza. The word began rhymes with man. The rhyme scheme is AA. Birth in the line 3 rhymes with earth. In line 4, the rhyme scheme is BB. Stir in line 5 rhymes with her. So in line 6, the rhyme scheme is CC. So the rhyme scheme of the first stanza is A, A, B, B, C, C. Now work out the rhyme scheme of the remaining four stanzas and start with line 7 and 8. So the first stanza goes as A, A, B, B, C, C. Second goes as D, D, E, E, F, F. They have followed the same rhyming scheme. Okay. Third, G, G, H, H, I, I. Fourth, J, J, K, K, L, L. Fifth goes as M, M, N, N, O, O. Okay. So here we end the question answers also. These all question and answers are from the book, from behind the book. We have solved all for you. Okay. Now quickly I am going to read the summary so that you remember the story thoroughly. So this poem expresses love and regrets in a very unusual way. It has to be said that the poem is written to his mother or at least written with his mother in his mind. It starts out by explaining how mother gave him life and died and it continues to explain how he expresses grief for his mother can't see him grown up and cannot see how his son has lived rest of his life. The third stanza turns to the idea that even if death could be undone and his mother could be reincarnated, it would be of no use because they would not recognize each other absolutely. In the fourth stanza, the whole poem takes an unusual turn for the author thinks that he is in debt to his mother and all womankind for the suffering they need to undergo when bearing the child and when they are in labor. What is labor? When they are giving birth to the child. 
He concludes the poem with more feeling of guilt for he thinks he has not repaid the favor of living to her mother and due to that to women in general. The author thinks that he is also to blame for the fact that men are considered superior to women for he has not done anything about it. In some sense, the author expresses concern over the inequality of sexes. What are the sexes? Male and female. Even it could be considered or labeled as a love poem, it cannot be compared with the poem beauty for the difference of tone is too great. So here we end a beautiful poem, CLM. I hope you enjoyed the poem with me and I will not go till you promise me that you will take care of all the women around you. Take care of them, respect them and don't even tolerate if anyone else does anything bad to them. Okay, it will be a very different world if all of us are treated equal. Thank you so much. I sign out here. Kashish Chuk. See you soon with the next chapter.